Hi, I'm Sasha Kropp. I'm an assistant professor here at the VU in the organizational psychology group. And I do a lot of research on leadership and teams with a specific focus on what actually happens in these teams in terms of actual objectively measurable behavior. So we're also trying to go away from questionnaires, especially when it comes to behavior, because people are apparently really bad at remembering what they did and with whom they communicated. And we don't have an internal video recording that we can just uh, rewind and look at. So what does social sensing actually mean? It's, uh, it's a, like an umbrella term for all devices that capture actual behavior and make it in some terms quantifiable and make it measurable. It consists of two parts. First, we need the devices that record a certain type of behavior. And the second step, we need to come from this data that is gathered to actual meaningful variables and have to put them in context. So then we need algorithms. There are several, several examples. You can see this is the, the Microsoft Connect, which was discontinued, but was used for a couple of studies where they used the depth camera to capture uh, for example, a gaze behavior, who a person is looking at. Um, this is an example of something we will be working with this group very soon. These are RFID tags. They ping and they can assess co-location, so they know when people are very close to each other, face-to-face -face proximity, for example. And these are sociometric badges. They were a couple of years ago a very, very big new thing. They were developed by an, a group from the MIT. And they wanted to capture almost everything. And I did a couple of studies with these devices. So this is what I'm going to present. Um, they also, they are working on a new version of these. This was the version we used. And they are equipped, they're about this size. People wear them around their necks. And they are equipped with certain different types of sensor. First of all, we have a microphone. So we have two microphones, some flashy lights are not important, but there's also an accelerometer, an infrared sensor, and a Bluetooth sensor in the device. And what they're supposed to do is as soon as two people wearing these badges stand in front of each other, the infrared will capture that and assess the seconds that they spend in vicinity. It's about a 15 degree angle, so people have to be really aligned. The devices have to be at about the same height, which can be difficult. You know, with German and Dutch people might work together and make a little bit of a height difference. Um, and we have the Bluetooth sensor, which basically assesses everything around in a bubble. So it goes, basically, the sensor goes through the body. Oh, and the microphones um, do not really capture what is said, which was supposed to be a benefit of these devices. So they do not record, but they record paraverbal uh, parameters such as the frequency or speaking terms. Actually, that turned out to not work very well. So we kept mostly with the infrared sensor for face-to-face -face contact. There are several possible applications for these devices in both the field and the lab. And I'm going to show you both what we did. This is from a validation study that we, that we conducted when we got the badges. We had a, a professorship in Chemnitz, uh, my own university. They were very technology uh, had a high affinity for technology, so they were very interested, and we tracked their behavior across two days. It turned out that the badges are actually very uncomfortable to wear for two days. Um, and what we did, this is a face-to-face -face network, so here you can see the entire group uh, with the infrared, so every time people were very close standing in front of each other was the seconds, and you can, you can identify the people who are most central in the entire network. What was also very nice to see the two people on a business trip sitting in the car the entire time were also identifiable. Um, what you also have is the accelerometer, so you can look at the, the speed and how much people uh, walk and stand. And we had we were lucky the day that we that they wore it was actually their summer party, so they played frisbee and that was also visible, which is also a good sign. Um, what was more important for me, because it was part of my dissertation at that point, was a paper we did on leadership and teams. And we put groups that already existed in the lab, we gave them a completely different task. They were wearing these badges, they were asked to build a bridge. Um, and we looked whether if people have a certain perception of another person's leadership, whether that is more likely to change if there's contact, actual face-to-face -face contact, because then we have new behavioral information, can change it. And that's what we found. 
Um, looking forward to conducting more lab and field studies with social different badges or social sensors. And these are the papers that we published in which are very close for your attention. Any questions? It's not the perceptions that make the patient survive, it's what we can actually 